I've been working on my off-grid step van conversion for almost two and a half years now. When I started building from scratch, I used my Chinese diesel heater a lot during the winter of the initial build because it was so cold. Finally, now that almost everything else has been built, it's time to do a little bit more of a permanent heater install. The diesel heater, it has power and it is giving me an E01 error, which I googled it and it says battery error. This I reason I think this is working is because you're on the phone. I'm so glad I got to be part of it. <laughs> I think I find November the hardest month to deal with because you're not quite fully set into winter. Here in BC, we haven't had any snow. Sometimes when I have a fire like this, I literally feel like I'm not alone, that I'm surrounded in a like, campfire circle with all of you. It's really Hi, my name's Flossie. This is my home, Sire in the Step Van, my self-converted RV, tiny cabin on wheels. Good morning, sunshine. It is winter time and I am finally getting round to installing this diesel heater. I've had it for ages. I even used it a ton when I was rebuilding the van to keep the van warm last winter. Oh my gosh, was it last winter? No, it was the winter before. This is my second winter. So I have the exhaust, the fuel line, the intake, everything is all still connected. I did have to replace this, but as you can see that one is so smashed but I have a spare somewhere I have a little silencer to keep it less noisy which is great and so I hope to mount all of this and then box it in but we'll see there we go broken one brand new one and it will just click in with the same connection right there what I'm hoping to do is something like this so that the space on top of the heater still becomes usable for storage. A shelf of some description to fill in this gap. So I have this board, I might cut it to length and then put some supports in because I have more pieces of wood here because I want to make sure that yes I have this diesel heater installed but I want to not compromise any of my storage space above it. <laughs> so Heaters are known for having noisy pumps so this thing fits around it to quieten it. It's, there are now quiet pumps, I know, but this is what I have. It got given to me. I'm grateful to not have to have bought it because I am not flush with cash right now. And that will go around there and keep it nice and silenced. I can't quite screw everything in right now because my drill is not currently happy. I was uh, fixing the chimney. I can put that up there. That'll be nice. Fixing the chimney and it fell off the roof and so it's broken. I've used concrete cement to hopefully bring it back to life. I'm really upset and sad about it because I really don't have the money to buy a new drill. I changed jobs recently 
if you didn't remember and um, now I earn a lot less money the idea was to be happier uh, jury's still out on that one um, but I recommend doing it if you aren't happy in a situation change it excuse the chainsawing noise in the background I am closer to people's houses now but this is my old parking spot which I am currently at right now and it is another thing that I'm gonna to have to let go because I don't have the money to sustain paying rent for it so getting myself all sorted with my heat source just seemed like a really important priority I'm really stoked with this little setup I've got some more insulation that I'm gonna pop in this gap down here because I noticed some moisture but condensation and these will still fit even if I have to leave the box there and open it up but I'll take all of this out screw it together so that it's all one unit and it will kind of just slot over top which would be neat the exhaust under the van is going to get mounted here somewhere my drill I fixed this morning and I just want to give it a little bit more time to dry before I try and use it and put it under stress and pressure. I'm very nervous that I won't better use it. <sighs> we'll see. But soon I shall have heat. Um, I need to run some electrical cables under here. So maybe for the next half an hour I'm gonna run wiring underneath this tape and into my little 12 volt switchboard. I need to add some more labels because I've got many things here now. Hi kitten, you need to help me with my electrical work? It's been so nice to see you. It is 10 degrees Celsius in here. I just got up, had a bit of a lazy morning in bed. The sun is out as you can see and I have some stuff to do. I spend my evenings in candlelight because I have lots of lights in here but they're actually really bright and sometimes my eyeballs just want a little dimness. So first order of business, light a fire and uh, boil some water so I can have breakfast, put some clothes on, get warm, and then once I'm warm, well, not even warm, put some with warm clothes on, then I'm gonna open the back doors behind the bed and we're gonna actually do the diesel heater installation. Um, I had a little sad story. Um, my drill broke. It snapped right here, probably because this battery is so heavy. But I was doing the um, cleaning of my chimney and it, I had this drill on top of the van and forgot that it was there and it fell off. Lucky I didn't lose it, but I guess if I hadn't have had a heavy battery on it, it probably wouldn't have done any damage. But I am proud of myself because I cannot afford to replace it. I am not making very much money right now. Um, and so I repaired it. I put glue, like um, 
glad wrap on the outside contact cement in along the crack I still want to put another little bit of contact cement on some of the seams to make it a little bit stronger but I'm really proud of myself it still works so I'm very relieved because I need this um, I'm gonna probably leave this tape on it until I've put another layer of contact cement on the inside but freaking save the day so yesterday I couldn't do any scrilling and drilling because the drill was mending itself gluing back together um, but I cut all the pieces of wood to install the diesel heater I'm very very grateful when um, my friends and patrons Grant and Stevie and Cece were here um, there's a video way back when I install my lithium batteries actually um, one of them I think it was Cece kindly disassembled the diesel heater I had because it was in this like modular stand which took up way too much space but all of the fuel lines are still connected and I didn't realize that until just now and I am so grateful because I was so worried about the fuel line so all I need to do is plug in the new screen because the old one is broken I have that I have the exhaust line I might need to figure out how to attach the exhaust like get some um not zip ties because they're plastic but the metal kind that you can screw tight so i can attach that's the only thing i don't have is the metal zip ties to attach the exhaust pipe to the the frame of the van so it exhausts nicely but i can temporarily attach it to test it and make sure it works <laughs> so light a fire <laughs> It's a great way of getting rid of all of my old toilet paper. And we have some cardboard to burn. I did some grocery shopping. Um, I have a sad story. So I have been making some... Uh, in the process of making some salves, I have some uh, St. John's wort, and this is calendula flowers, except it was sitting like this and half of the flower, some of the flowers were out of the oil and some of it has started to go moldy. And so I am going to decide that I'm sacrificing this. I am going to then buy and order some dried calendula flowers and I'm really disappointed because I harvested these from a friend's place and it felt like harvesting sunshine I've wasted this oil now but it was in a place and then the bottle fell over um, and I just can't risk using this if I want to use this oil as salve on open wounds as healing balm if it's moldy I've compromised it so I wanted to tell you that not all of my projects turn out great and some of them fail so I will be saving this oil and probably using it in my compost for the garden I'm just gonna start preparing for next spring I am gonna do a bunch more gardening and build a garden and I'm excited about it a whole lot of sage from my friend's garden the other day Oh, it smells amazing and so part of it I'm gonna dry it and then I'm tempted to make another sage simple syrup because it was so good and I've been drinking it in cocktails and it is delicious but we might tie it up and hang it above the fireplace like this under the sink. Let's go get some screws, get my drill, open up the back doors and start screwing together the frame that goes around the diesel heater. I am so excited about when this. When we come back We'll have hot, rod hot water ready for breakfast and tea.
I want to be able to have this secure, but I also want to be able to remove the wedges so that I can like, take the tank out and fill it up without spilling. So this piece works great here. It really just jams in. And I'll get another piece to go here. Test. Okay. Positive. To positive. Negative to negative. The moment we have a little red light saying that this is not connected, which is great. There's our fuse. Oh my God, look, it works. Dude. I have to remember how to use this. I don't remember how to use it. I can't remember how to use this. I have a remote too. Here's the situation. I have hooked up the diesel heater. It has power. And it is giving me an E01 error, which I googled it and it says battery error. But a couple of people said that it also could be a glow plug issue. There is a separate error code for glow plugs, but I'm not getting it. My battery system, I'm pretty damn sure is okay. It's brand new. And I tested the voltage with my voltage multimeter and it is at 13.3. Great. I also have a little backup battery and I could potentially also try it with my uh, generator. I don't really need to, but that this is at 12.7, 12 12.8. 12 um, and each time I switch it on, it gives me a better area. Interesting because this is a new screen. So I'm going to do one more test, put the old screen in, even though that old screen is smashed. And I don't even know if I'll better read it, but I'll try and see. But like, it could be a glow plug. It's definitely not a battery issue. <sighs> I don't know what's wrong and why it won't work. But I did store it outside for a long time between when I built the van and then when I'm installing it now. And so it hasn't had a great life. I haven't taken amazing care of it. So it is possible that there's some, some moisture and corrosion has gotten inside the main part of the diesel heater. And I'll need to take it apart. Yay! Well, there's no smoke, but there's warm air coming out of the exhaust. Oh, then it's running. It's already running. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I got the stupid battery code error, and it wouldn't work with the new replacement screen. Wow. But my old smashed one literally just turned the fucking thing on. That's the screen was giving me a battery area. <laughs> yeah, this heater is, bl is bloody working. Ah! <laughs> it's just because I have you on the phone. Honestly, this reason I think this is working is because you're on the phone. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to be part of it. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. Yeah, it's working. Awesome. Shit. <laughs> awesome. Oh, wait. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, maybe it's not because it stopped pumping and now it's the fan is winding down again. Okay, you might have to run it a few times to get all the bubbles out of that. Oh yeah, okay. Okay, I can keep doing that. I've got the remote. We can make this work. Yeah. Thank you. I just no problem. I just remember if you if it fails three times, it'll lock you out. It doesn't matter. You just unplug the power, wait a minute, plug it back in, and it'll reset everything. Okay, that is really helpful to know because I would have never known that. I mean, I probably would yeah. have unplugged it because I do that with computers too. If it doesn't work, turn it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The first time it did that to me, I was like, why won't it start? And then, yeah, I found out that it was locked out. That's wild. Okay, I'll keep trying and I'll send you texts, update, and send you some pictures of my 
stupid smashed screen and the, the other one. That would be awesome. Thanks, Bossy. No worries. Thanks for being available to chat for five minutes. Anytime. Good luck. Talk okay. to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, kitty. It's fucking working! I literally don't understand. Giving me this battery code error, and now it's working. I mean, it's probably still priming, but you can hear it. I brought a brand new um, screen because I'd smashed this one, and then it gave me a battery code error, but then I plugged that back in just as a check, and it is doing its little bestest to start up. I've got that inside here. Works, didn't work. But I can't read anything on it. So luckily, I have this. It's amazing, I can like check everything and then this is what I'll turn it on with from up. In bed up there, just be like, Beep, heat please. I can't believe that. It was just a screen issue. Now I called Grant. I feel like he's my electrical garden guardian angel. And he's a theory that the screen that I bought to replace the cracked one was possibly a 24 volt one, but I can potentially change that in the settings. However, the heater is working. The only thing now I need to do is drill a vent and put a little vent cover on, on that side, so that it will blast air in the right place. I am so thrilled! It's working great. I worked, I made it work, I made it work. And then I've got this nice little platform shelf that protects the diesel heater and I can still store things on top of it and still access the fuel tank. So I need to attach the exhaust to the frame of the van so it's not hanging on the ground. Put a vent on that side. But I really wanted to let it run for a wee bit and then oh, see if we can make this module work. It should have been an exact replacement. It looks exactly the same, but these things are finicky. So who knows? Pretty colors. <sighs> Having a fire makes me happy. November the hardest month to deal with because you don't quite fully set into winter here in BC we haven't had any snow and once 
actually do, it will change. I'll get excited again. I know that I've got some trips planned soon to see some dear friends who you might know, but it's gonna be good. But it's not raining tonight and I really, really was just like, I have to get outside. It doesn't make any sense for me to stay inside and be on the internet. So I'm doing my best at the moment to reduce the amount of time I spend on the internet and get outside, be present. It's like another month till the solstice, another month of days getting slightly shorter, and then they start getting longer again. <sighs> it's nice and warm. I'm a fire sign, if you know anything about astrology. A Sagittarius, a lover of fire. And maybe I think I just need to spend more time warmed up this way. Sometimes when I have a fire like this, I literally feel like I'm not alone, that I'm surrounded in a like campfire circle with all of you. It's really weird. I see some of your names pop up in comments frequently and the kind words you say, which are such an encouragement. The turn of the seasons from fall to winter, I find often really challenging. And sharing how I feel about stuff and hearing whether you all feel the same or differently is so helpful. It's so encouraging. I hope you all are finding something that warms you in some way to like disconnect a little bit because I think maybe that's part of it. I'm spending too much time connected to stuff that I don't really care about. Yes, I follow some people on YouTube. No, I don't watch TV. I don't have a TV. I don't watch any of that. But I spend a lot of time on the internet still. And the other thing about the internet is it's a thing that constantly just drives comparison. Like when one is on the internet, one is also looking at all of these other things. And if you're looking at stuff that you're also interested in, it is hard not to compare oneself with everybody you see online doing those things half the time I see people and I'm like I just want to be friends I think I'm really lucky to have the friends that I have I have some friends and acquaintances and yeah that's the other thing like I've moved countries three different times as as an adult and every time you move countries or move big, from big city to big city or one area to the other that is vastly separated, you have to rebuild your entire community. And those people who are immigrants, those people who are migrants, those people who are refugees, I didn't mind by choice my moves. Some people don't get those choices. And then you have to start from scratch with community building. And that is hard. It's definitely been a season of change challenge and disruption and rethinking for me definitely rethinking priorities and goals what actually do I want to achieve where actually do I want to be in my life what actually do I want to be doing those are hard decisions to make because once you've made the decision you then have to kind of put it into action and do something about it that's the tricky part I appreciate the audience and community that gathers with me each week so much. You're changing my life and I hope I can share my excitement and adventures with you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all next week. A huge thank you to my Patreons who make doing this every week sustainable for me. I can't wait to read your comments and until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye!